dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 528 on this Wednesday. Hope everybody is waking up nice and easy and is most warm in their bed right now and warm in your house. If you're not, turn that thermometer up a little thermostat up a little bit and get warm because the temps are only going to go south from here. We're going to bring in Brandon in the fold to give you a better breakdown of what you can see in Brandon. There's a little bit of blue on radar this morning, but for most of eastern Kentucky, they're just seeing cold temps. Exactly, and that snow is drifting a little bit more south as we head through the next few hours. We'll keep a track on that for you too, but let's take a look at current conditions first. We start in Pikeville with the Pikeville Medical Center camera. Pretty quiet there, but they're in line to see some of that snow if it drifts continuing uh, south southward on its trek there into the mountains a little bit later on this morning. We go to US 119, US 23 at Jenkins, and again, no major issues over there. This one looks like traffic's moving pretty well, but again, anywhere that snow hits this morning, it's likely going to stick to the roads because of the cold road temperatures, so keep that in mind as well. Whitesburg all quiet as we start your day. McKee looking a little bit windy there at times, maybe just a little bit of visibility issues, maybe even just a little bit of snowflake activity there as well earlier this morning. We take a look at live pinpoint Doppler radar from Louisa back over toward Wayne in West Virginia, back all the way toward Jackson where the radar is located. You can see some bands of snow trying to work their way south. Because of that, there is a winter weather advisory out until later this morning for most of eastern and southern Kentucky. Back toward the south, it expires at 9 o'clock. That's out toward I-75 in the central parts of the area at 10 and 11 there closer to the West Virginia state border there. We're going to continue to see that wind chill for the Mountain Parkway and I-64 corridors until later today. That's about 1 o'clock I think and then over into Wise County, Virginia as well. Temperatures fall Falling. We reached our high at midnight today, and it's only going to continue to go down from here. Still in the low to mid-20s across parts of the area, but you see where the front is moving through parts of central Kentucky already in the teens. You factor in the wind chill. It feels like single digits, teens, and even below zero into parts of Lexington and Louisville. Forecast today by this afternoon, we get down to about 14.3 overnight. Could be closer to zero in spots, especially if we see less cloud cover, and the winds are going to feel like below zero wind chills at times later today. All right, the rest of the forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. All righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, more than 100 people were at the Pike County Fiscal Court meeting last night to continue a discussion about a growing problem, issues with the county's landfill. WYMT's Justin Case tells us what proposals are in place to help deal with the problem and how they could affect your wallet. I would propose to raise that to $25. Garbage pickup rate increases were discussed at the Pike County Fiscal Court meeting Tuesday, but none were actually voted on. We're hoping that we could keep the rate the same or a much smaller increase because it's going to impact senior citizens and, and folks on uh, fixed incomes really hard. But a new direction must be taken. Engineers say the Pike County landfill only has between four to eight years left before it's completely full. And expanding the current landfill to extend its life six to eight years would come at a hefty price. Is it worth five and a half to six million dollars to have that, uh, that additional time? In my personal opinion, is no. Judge Executive Ray Jones says the Solid Waste Department operates at a deficit of more than $1 million per year, leaving a rate increase as a possibility. As we will let Geo do a rate study to tell us what the rates need to be. Another option, build a new landfill, but city officials say with no money saved for a project like that, rates would need to be increased and a plan would need to be in place quickly. It takes you two to three years to get all of your permitting done construction work done and we don't have any money set aside to uh, construct or to open a new landfill. Solving a problem that has been building up for years. Well, a new engineering firm will be at the landfill Thursday to give another estimate as to how much time the county has until the landfill is completely full. Judge Executive Ray Jones says he does not believe a vote on a rate increase will take place at their next meeting, which is this Friday. Well, yesterday we told you about educators in Mingo County, West Virginia, meeting to discuss a potential work stoppage as part of their opposition to an education bill working its way through the legislature. This morning we have learned that if the bill does not address their concerns, the stoppage will happen. Officials with the Mingo County Education Association and the American Federation of Teachers in Mingo County say school system employees took a vote yesterday and 97% of them voted for the stoppage if needed.
Now, the educators have some support in their displeasure from the state's highest office. Governor Jim Justice says he would veto the bill if passed as is. Justice said at a news conference Tuesday that lawmakers should consider passing his original intent of giving teachers and other state employees a 5% pay raise without the multiple facets of the bill now before the Republican-led Senate. And all we're doing today is really just creating a mess when a mess doesn't need to be created. The legislation would create public charter schools, increase elementary school class sizes in public schools, establish saving accounts for families to pay for private school, and require teachers to sign off annually on union dues. Some call the bill payback for last year's teachers' strike. In national news this morning, federal workers furloughed during the partial government shutdown are back at work and soon they're going to get paid. The Office of Management and Budgets Deputy Director announced plans to get back pay to most employees by Thursday. Some got what they are owed yesterday. Government contractors will not get back pay. Meanwhile, California's biggest power company is in trouble. Pacific Gas and Electric has filed for bankruptcy protection. This comes after suffering financial woes related to billions of dollars worth of claims tied to recent deadly wildfires. Officials believe that blaze started when a PG&E power line came in contact with nearby trees. The company is seeking approval for a $5.5 billion financial deal. Well, the filing deadline is come and gone, and the candidates in races are set for Kentucky's primary this May. Hillary Thornton has a breakdown at the crowded field of governors. It is now officially the 2019 election season. The candidate filing deadline passed statewide offices up for grabs, including the Commonwealth's governor. You'll have two robust primaries uh, in Kentucky in, in May. Uh, it will be interesting to see which candidate uh, emerges. Uh, on the Democratic side, it's very interesting, uh, potentially a, a real three-way race there. There are four choices on the Democratic side. State House Minority Leader Rocky Adkins, Attorney General Andy Bashir former auditor Adam Edlin and Jeff Young. And WKYT's political editor Bill Bryant says the three candidates who are raising significant money are going to run hard. There is potentially a, a lane to victory uh, for each of them uh, because uh, they, they can put together different types of coalitions. So it really is going to be an interesting Democratic primary to watch. Meanwhile, the Republican primary is expected to play out a little differently with the man who currently holds the position on the ballot. Governor Bevan uh, by far has the, the greater name recognition and should be the favorite uh, in that primary. Political newcomer William Woods, state representative Robert Goforth, and a late addition to the field Ike Lawrence, all hoping to take the Republican ticket over Governor Matt Bevan. The primary election is set for May 21st. Hillary Thornton, WYMT Mountain News. That should have been candidates for governor. Now, there are several other races we will be watching this year. Four Democrats and four Republicans have filed to replace Allison Lundergan Grimes as Kentucky Secretary of State. Republicans Stephen Nipper and Democrats Jason Belcher and Harold of Harold and Jeff Sebesta were the last to file in that race. Three men have filed in the race for attorney general. Greg Stumbo is the only Democrat in that race. Daniel Cameron and Will Schroeder will face off in the Republican primary. Now, Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes is responding to accusations of ethics violations. The Lexington Herald leader, along with ProPublica, published an investigation into Grimes' use of the state's voter registration system. Electronic records appear to show that the Secretary of State and her staff used the system to find information on political rival rivals and job candidates, including Democratic gubernatorial candidate Rocky Atkins. Grimes asserted that the records had not been verified, adding, quote, I will not stand idly by as my work, credibility of my staff, and the trust of the voters are unfairly attacked by recycled, inaccurate, gotcha headlines. Well, in other news, at 537 this morning, a Kentucky company says it has developed hemp plants that do not contain any THC. Gen Canna Global is credited with the breakthrough. State growers and processors have struggled to keep trace amounts of the psychoactive substance out of hemp. The federal farm bill removed industrial hemp from the Controlled Substances Act, but it did not change the legal THC standard requiring the state agriculture department to destroy hot hemp plants. 
Meanwhile, state troopers arrested a Knox County man after they say he sexually abused young children. 29 year old Joseph Davis was taken into custody after social services received a report of sexual assault. Davis is charged with three counts of first degree sodomy, three counts of first degree sexual abuse, three counts of first degree criminal abuse, and one count of first degree rape. He is being held in the Knox County Detention Center. Well, the Hazard Police Department arrested a woman for allegedly driving under the influence after a hit and run investigation. Officers were called to a hit and run near Applebee's on Highway 15. Police say they found Janice Fields of Hazard behind the wheel of a car with the engine still running on Combs Road at the tobacco store. Fields' car matched the description of the car that left the scene. Police noticed there was front end damage to the car. After a field sobriety test, Fields Police say officers found pills and marijuana. Fields faces is a host of charges. Well, officials in Perry County are asking for your help this morning to help find some items stolen from the gravesite of a beloved cemetery caretaker. For 75 years, Martin Stallings cared for his little Perry County community of Yerkes, helping those in need. He died in 2016 and was buried at a cemetery he helped build and keep up. But recently, someone took a handful of items, including lights and small trinkets from his grave. The family says the sentimental value of it is worth more than anything to him. I would appreciate if somebody could let me know because it is so hard to come back here and see how hard me and my kids has worked and then come back here and see that people are so little life. Helen Stallings has filed a report with the Perry County Sheriff's Office. Anyone with information is asked to give them a call. Well, a helicopter crash cl claimed the lives of three first responders in Ohio Tuesday. One man and two women aboard a medical helicopter were on their way to pick up a patient when it went down. It happened about 75 miles southeast of Columbus. No one on board survived the crash. The National Transportation Safety Board and Federal Aviation Administration are sending investigators to the scene. Well, it was a wild crash that was caught on camera in Alabama. It shows a pickup truck crashing through the front window of a restaurant. It happened at 45 Seafood in Mobile. You can see as the truck starts to smoke and the driver attempts to get out. He managed to walk away without any serious injuries and no one else was hurt. Well, nearly $50,000 is on the way to the Perry County court system. Rocket Docket is a grant that Commonwealth's attorney Scott Blair received to help process nonviolent drug cases. The grant totaling $32,000 along with another $15,000 from the fiscal court. Cases will now be processed more swiftly, hoping to get addicts into treatment faster rather than just sitting in a jail cell. So this was a way that I found that um, a lot of other jurisdictions have used to both sort of put a stifle on the drug problem and also help save the county money and save the police officers time and energy and, and the court system too. It keeps us from having, the court system here moves pretty fast anyway, but this helps us get some of the cases through even faster. The grant starts February 13th and lasts until June 13th, 30th. Rather, if all goes to plan, they can apply for another one for the remainder of the year. Well, officials with the University of the Cumberland say they are the first college in the state to offer a blockchain degree. Staff say blockchain technology bridges the gap between IT and business by helping businesses with everyday tasks like inventory all the way to security leaks. They say according to LinkedIn, blockchain was the number one emerging job in 2018, and they are excited to be one of the schools offering the innovative program for their students. University of the Cumberlands um, is on the cutting edge and that we are constantly looking for degrees that will employ people. The blockchain degree will be offered both on campus and online. Well, Hazard lost a beloved member of the community earlier this week. Betty Morton was the wife of former Hazard Mayor and Home Lumber Company President Bill Morton. They were married for nearly 70 years. We have posted two previous stories that included Betty on our website, including one of the not from 1993 featuring Betty and Bill at their historic cabin near the Perry Leslie County line. The visitation will be Sunday from 1 until the funeral at 3 at Maggard's Mountain View Chapel here in Hazard. Betty Morton was 90 years young.